Hey guys, let's take a look at the dreaded problem types that algebra tubers always hear about, rumors about, and then they, it's like one of those deep, dark things. But anyway, we're going to knock those out today. And we're going to do a, a, uh, an easy way to do it, at least a, a very systematic way of doing it. It's not exactly in your book uh, written this way, so I would definitely, absolutely make, you, make sure you take notes on this and write them very neatly in your notebook. And, uh, you know, again, you should be doing this with your notes. You should have this like in your notebook paper, like boom, 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 and then, you know, 22 and then like that. And then boom, there you go. So make sure we're going to have, uh, you know, a, a way to do this. And these are not you know, problems. They're puzzles. Okay. Puzzles. There's a typo in your book. Don't, don't pay any attention to that. Okay. The, these are the type of problems where you go, oh, John went 862 miles. You know, he did this blah. How long would it take Fred to go the same 862 miles or whatever? and then you figure them out, okay? These are the steps. Make sure you pause this, write these down, and then use these as a system to solve all these equations, okay? Number one, turn the puzzle into four equations. <clears throat> Number two, make sure to have one distance equation, one rate equation, one time equation, and then the fourth equation will be whatever is left that you can look at the paragraph, okay? And at first, you might struggle a little bit to find that fourth equation. That's completely okay. Don't worry about it. The point of Saxon math is to struggle a little while, and then after a few you know, weeks or months, you got it, and you keep doing it and doing it. Okay, number three, substitute and solve. Number four, that's it. <laughs> number four is do the problem, which is included in number three, which is solve. Okay, and we'll do these, all right? Now remember these kind of things we did a couple of weeks ago? Oh, RMTM equals 12, you know, or RZTZ equals 36, you know, T of M equals, you know, 10 or whatever. You're going to make those equations. You're going to create those yourself. And if you remember, there are always four of them. You're going to make those four using the little paragraph. So let's look at a little paragraph, okay? Bing made the trip Sunday. Frank made the same trip Monday. Bing traveled 12 miles an hour. Frank, 20 miles an hour. So his time was two hours less than Bing's, how far the two men traveled. Now, you know, those two men traveled the same distance, okay? So if you want to visualize this, you can go, okay, there's this guy making a trip, making a trip, there's Bing, okay? There's Frank, he's making the same trip, boom. So their distances are equal. Well, you tell me, if their distances are equal, we can write an equation, right? Then we can use those little subscripted variables we're going to say the distance of, you know, Bing is the same thing as the distance of Frank, right? Okay, there's only one thing to remember. We don't use Ds in these equations. Remember back, back this, you know, you don't see any Ds down here, right? Well, the distance is equal to rate times the time. Think about it, the distance. Somebody says, well, how far did you go on your trip? You go, uh, well, I went 50 miles an hour for 10 hours. And the person will go, the person will go, oh, you went 500 miles? You go 50 times 10. Oh, yeah, that's right. My rate is 50 times 10 hours. Yeah, I went 500 miles. So we don't write Ds at all. We write Rs and Ts. So change the D sub B into R sub B times T sub B. And that's going to equal R sub F, right, times T sub F. Look, there's one equation, three to go. Okay, that's the first one. The same trip, boom. They're, this is a distance, this is his distance, they're the same, there's one equation. We don't know what they are, no idea, but we'll figure it out. Bing traveled 12 miles an hour. You tell me, what's that equation? I'll, I'll stretch you out. R is the rate, that's the speed. The rate of being, uh, Bing equals 12, right? Frank traveled 20 miles an hour, so what's our third equation? R sub f equals 20 okay so we have a distance we have a rate now we need a time frank's time is two hours less than bing's okay well fine frank's time we'll call that t sub f notice there's another t sub f over here the time of frank was two hours less than bing's so that that means that's the time of bing's minus two now we don't know what any of these things are we don't know what the answers are at all well, we're getting to it, right? We've done step one, turn the puzzle into four equations. Step two, we have a distance. There's our distance. We turn the D into the rate times time. We have 
a rate, we have a time, and there's our fourth one. Now all we need to do is do the same thing we did before and plop in all these numbers and values into this big equation right there. We there? The only thing we've done differently is we've looked at this little paragraph and we've come up with four equations. There they are. Let's plop them in there. So the rate of being 12, let's just stick it in there. The time of being, we don't know yet. I'll just put T sub B. That equals the rate of Frank, 20. The time of Frank, oh, look at there. That's the time of being minus two. Now look quickly. Look at this equation. Can we solve this equation? Yes, because there's just one variable, right? So we got it. Okay, so let's do it. 12 time of being equals 20, let's see, 20 time of being minus 20 times two is 40. All right, so let's move this over here. So 12 minus 20 is negative eight time of being equals negative 40. Okay, so the time of being is negative 40 divided by negative eight, so that's gonna be five. Okay, we got it. How far do the two men travel? We'll figure that out in a second. Well, if the time of being is, uh, well, you know what? We can just do one of these if you want. Look at this. How far did being travel? Well, that's the distance, right? The d, d sub b is the same thing as that. So the rate of being was 12. The time of being was five. So he went 12 miles an hour for five hours. So he went 60 miles, right? Let's just check and make sure it, it works for Frank too. Well, Frank goes 20 miles an hour. His time is two hours less than Bing's. So his time is five minus two. So he goes three hours. Well, what's 20 times three hours? There it is right there. We got it right. We proved it, all right? Let's try another one. Pause and copy if you need to. All right, Br'er Rabbit hopped to the briar patch at 10 miles an hour at 10 a.m. So he left at 10 a.m. At noon, think about it, that's two hours later, right? Br'er Wolf began the chase from the same starting point. In other words, here's Br'er Rabbit. He starts and goes boop to the briar patch. Here's Br'er Wolf, boop, same starting point, for the same point. So their distances are exactly the same. So stop right there. We have an equation already. We have the distance of the rabbit is equal to the distance of the wolf. We don't use d's though, remember. Distance equals rate times time. So the rate of the rabbit, the time of the rabbit, is equal to the rate of the wolf, the time of the wolf. One equation gone, three to go. Okay, well, Br'er Rabbit starts at uh, 10 a.m. and he ends at 2 p.m. So how, what's Br'er Rabbit's time? The time of the rabbit is four, four hours, right? 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, the wolf chases starting at noon. So his time is only from noon to 2 p.m. So that's gonna be two. And we're just missing something. What are we missing? We got a distance, we got a time, we're missing a rate, right? Okay, Br'er Rabbit hopped at 10 miles per hour. Boom, we got it. So the rate of the rabbit is 10. There's our four equations. Now we just plop it in there. All right, so let's stick it in there. Rate of the rabbit, 10. Time of the rabbit, we got it. It's four. That equals the rate of the, they're asking us how fast did the wolf run? Rate of the wolf, we don't know. The time of the wolf though, we know is two. Okay, so we got 40 is equal to two times uh, the rate of the wolf, so the rate of the wolf is 20. There we go. That's all there is to it. You got it. Okay. Use those steps. One, two, three. Figure them out. At first, you might struggle to find the third or fourth equation, whatever. Visualize it. Draw a picture if you need to. You'll get it. No problem. Okay. A little bit of geometry. Just a teeny bit of geometry. We're going to solve uh, similar triangles and proportions. Same kind of thing. Remember about similar triangles. The definition of a similar triangle is that it's a triangle that has the same angles as another triangle. And remember, if they tell you that this angle is congruent to that one, and this is congruent to that one, then logically this third one has to be also congruent to this one right there. Okay, and they're asking us now to solve for X and Y. Well, okay, let's try this. We could do a couple of different ways. Remember how we do this, we just stay consistent. If we did five over eight equals x over y, that would be true, but it wouldn't help us very much, would it? Because we have two unknowns, we couldn't do it. So in this case, we're gonna to have to go five to seven 
is the same thing as x to 9. In other words, left to right equals left to right. Or we could do left to left equals right to right. Either one of those is fine. But let's just go ahead and do left to right. We'll go 5 to 7. So the left to right equals left to right. x over 9. So 7x equals 45. So x is just equal to 45 over 7, which is 6.428571, repeating decimal. You don't have to know that, though. It's okay. This is good enough. Okay. So we have x. Let's try to, uh, to get y here. Well, what looks like we can... Oh, if we got x, we could do you know, 45 sevens over y. That'd be kind of a pain, though. Let's do this instead. This to this and that to that. How about that? A little easier. 7 over 8 is the same thing as 9 over y. 7 times y is equal to 9 times 8 is 72. And y is going to be 72 divided by 7, or 10.285714, repeating decimal. Anyway, you don't have to know that. That's, this is good enough right here. That's it. Just know your proportions are exactly the same. Okay, give A a whirl. Look at your instructions, okay? You can take a little extra time if you want to. Follow those instructions. Find out four... Uh, equations and then stick them in there. Remember, don't use D's. You can use D's at first, but go ahead and change the distance of this into rate times time. Rate times time. Rate of something times time of something with those little subscriptive variables. All right, go ahead and pause it and do it. Okay, Elvira made a trip on Tuesday. David made the same trip on Wednesday. So stop right there. We know that David's trip, and we'll start with Elvira. Elvira's trip or her distance the distance of Elvira is the same thing as the distance of David. I'll stop right there. That makes sense? Okay. Those are two distances. We don't use these. We use R's and T's. So the rate of Elvira, time of Elvira, equals the rate of David, the time of David. One equation down, three to go. Elvira traveled at 14 miles an hour. Okay, fine. The rate of Elvira is 14. David was 21. So the rate of David is 21. Now we just need a time, right? David's time was three hours less than Elvira's. Okay, well, the time of David is the time of Elvira minus three. Now again, we don't know what these all are. Don't try to guess what they all are from here. Just set yourself up with four beautiful equations, okay? Or slightly attractive, if you can manage that. All right, now we just plop this junk in here. What's the rate of Elvira? 14. Stick it in there. Time of Elvira? I don't know. That's what we're trying to figure out. Rate of David? 21. Time of David is the time of Elvira? Minus 3. Now notice this equation. You can solve this because all in this equation, the only variable we have is time of Elvira. So 14, time of Elvira equals 21, time of Elvira. I can't hardly say that. Minus 21 times 3 is 63. Okay, this goes over. It turns into 14 minus 21, which is negative 7, equals negative 63. And so the time of Elvira is 9. Now, they are asking us, how far did they travel? Well, if Elvira went, her rate was 14 miles an hour, which they tell us, and her time was 9 hours, you just multiply 14 by 9, and that's 126. That's how far she went, 126 miles. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's give uh, B a whirl. Pause it and try B. Okay. Well, again, this is one of these funky ones. You might be like, you know, turning your math book around just to see how this works. But I'll leave this the way it is. But I'm going to rewrite or redraw this second a similar triangle here. So I'm going to flip this thing so... You know, it kind of goes like 180 degrees over. Um, and then that will give us the left side will be 5. That will give us, I'm kind of looking at this thing, the bottom is going to be Y and the top is going to be X. Okay, so did I do that right? I think I did. Yeah, the 5 and then, yeah, okay. So this is what it looks like. I'm just going to kind of go yeah, like that. So let's figure out what X is first. So I got a nice, you could go 6 to 5 equals 7 to X. Or you could do 6 to 7 equals 5 to X. Let's just do that one. 6 to 7 is 5 to X. So that means 6X equals 35. So X equals 35 over 
six or five point eight three 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 three. You don't even know that. It's already. Why? Same old thing. We can do the. You know, we can do six to nine equals five to y. We can let's try that one. So we got six to nine. That equals five to y. So six times y is six y. Nine times five is forty-five. And y is equal to 45 over 6. That is going to be broken down into 15 over 2. That's 7.5. That's good enough. Okay. All right. Make sure you keep those notes handy on how to do those um, uh, distance equation problems and to use them for today's uh, problem set. So good luck. Take care. See ya.